after the last good or not? <laughs> Are you getting it? Yes. Say yes. Yes. I will, I will ask you next week. <laughs> So, I got a question I don't want to name. So, when I say and argue that uh, I contemplate and reflect, so you see, say for example, you contemplate and reflect about the matter consists of molecule, molecule consists of atom, and then atom consists of uh, nucleus where there is a proton and neutron and uh, electron is charged it is constantly move oh it's moving so it has a life now here you are wrong your contemplation process is wrong anything moving not necessarily has a life electron does not have a life we all know it but how do you know it I know it by the principles of physics on one hand and the principles of violence. Clear? So if I don't follow the principles of Eastern wisdom in contemplation and reflection, I have my own ways of contemplation and reflection, it will not work. The way it will not work in electron. Oh, electron is moving, so it is, it is a life. And then we unnecessarily argue. <laughs> so that argue is the snail's feet. <laughs> yes, we should raise the questions. It is important. In Eastern wisdom, if you don't ask the questions and you simply accept, then you have a blind belief. It will, give, it will give you a kick on the butt again, and you will start living in ignorance. <laughs> so the journey of the Eastern wisdom at the equal footing, I should raise the question, very relevant question, after carefully understanding. So let us see, let us see in, uh, before we go to the next topic. You observe the world carefully, entire world, examine objects, and what is your experience? Notice how everything is constantly changing. That is the way process of contemplation I'm just talking about. Nothing in the material world remains permanent. First observation. Second, now bring that observation to your body, to your mind, to your intellect, to your thought. I have a lot of stress. Did you, did you recognize the change? Before the stress, you were calm. So now there is a change, you have a stress, and anything that changes will not remain permanent. So you say to the stress, thank you, you ha I have a stress. You have made me more alert and aware. That this stress will not continue for long. Because it was not existent before, now it exists, it will not exist in the future. Why? Because it is constantly changing. So why to worry? <laughs> Why to worry? So you have more stress, you should have a bigger smile on the face. Thank you, God. You reminded me. That is the nature of contemplation. But now let us uh, look at the principles. So the first principle is the cause. The moment you have a stress, for example, find out the cause. So the stress is an effect, and the cause is somewhere else. And then discover the cause. The cause is another effect for another cause. So there is a constant change. 
that is why the stress does not exist. How do you say I've been stressed throughout my last week? And I had differences with my honey. I didn't agree. He or she doesn't listen to me. That is why I have a lot of stress. So the cause, the first factor that I have to look at, why I have to look, I have to see what is real and what is unreal. So what is unreal, what is false, that is constantly changing. First factor is the cause. Second factor, you have to see it is made up of the parts. Anything that is made up of the parts cannot be real. Because any part can change. Body is made up of parts. Hmm? Body is made up of the parts. The stress is also made up of many parts. I have a lot of stress. Why? You hurt me. So second part. How I hurt you? Huh? I hurt you. Uh, no, no, you hurt my emotions. Third part. Go on. Anything that is made up of the parts has nothing to do with the real. It has to do with the constantly changing, and what is constantly changing is the false. Third, anything that is perceived by the senses in the mind has to be false. Why? The real self cannot be seen by the sense organ in the mind. I experience the stress? Yes. It is false. Fourth, does it has a beginning or the end? Yes. I did not have this stress an hour before. Now I'm already in a stress because I'm listening to you. You may say that. <laughs> So you have a lot of stress because you are listening to me? No, no, I have a stress listening to John. Why should I have a stress? Already have a gray beard, you know. So you see these four factors. So first we observe the world of the change, then we have self-observation of the body, mind, intellect. They all are changing. The moment intellectually with awareness your brand, what is changing, is not me. Following the four factors, then what you happens, you develop an intellectual conviction. How you develop an intellectual conviction? You have to repeat this analysis again and again and again and again. Until what time? Until the mind settles, whatever is changing is not me. There is a comes the clarity and a conviction in the mind. So when that clarity and conviction comes in the mind, that is known as the power of discernment in the intellect. Discernment. Discernment is a is a jewel of the intellect. What happens? Intellect shines. How the intellect shines with a cognitive ability. What is this cognitive ability? Now we're able to separate what is false in the real in me. We have to train this mind again and again and again. What happens when the conviction is irreversible? There comes a conviction which is irreversible. Viveka shines all the time. When the Viveka shines all the time, the mind realizes. Mind says, now I am a seeker. I still want to know. More and more. Why? It reduces your anxiety. It reduces your emotional dependence. You're not worried and you're not into anxiety. You don't have a fear. You don't have a sense of insecurity. How can you say, I don't have a sense of insecurity? I don't have money. You recognize that the money cannot buy a security. Let me make an effort to earn money. You separate it. Then. That is the power of discernment. 
So that is how we have to contemplate and reflect. Remember the example of an atom, electron, proton, and neutron. Electron is moving, so therefore it is a life. No. The principle of biology is different from the principle of physics. That's why we have two branches of science. Oh, fan is moving, so it has a life. So I don't follow the principles. And then I argue unnecessarily. Oh, it's OK, it's a part of the life. I also argued with my master, so I don't feel bad. I simply recognize that oh, there is still a level of ignorance is continuing. This guy. So I have to guide in a different way. I have to express in a different way. That is what I have expressed today. So the first factor we have, first principle we have understood, <coughs> what we have, <coughs> we have understood there is a gift inside. Outermost layer is very much shining. That is what the impurity is. The impure desires, emotions, attachment that cloud the mind and prevent from seeing the true nature of the real self. Greed, the desire has become, the impurity has become very thick. Hatred, it has still become thicker. Jealousy, it has become thickest. What do we think? Ah, who cares, you know? Even a doctor becomes a criminal, so it will work. No, it will not work here in Eastern wisdom. I have to purify the mind. Or any profession. In this journey, there is no chance. You have a slightest of the... You have to minimize the impurities. What happens when you minimize the impurities? Then obviously you become a seeker. Then you recognize how dangerous these impurities are. I need not to enter into the kind of a hatred or a greed or a jealousy. So the mind remains pure and I'm able to find the real self. Second layer that I have been talking about, oscillation. You can say oscillation, distracted mind. Because of the impurities, the mind is constantly on the run in different objects and desires. When mind is not aware of attachment and detachment, so what will happen? Either it will run after the attachment or it will go in the opposite direction. And that fails my meditation. Mind is never steady, but jumps from one thing to the other. So that mind, we say, it is swinging like a pendulum. You said, you know, uh, I say, drop your attachment. So your mind moves to the detachment. It is a kind of an aversion. Oh, no, no, no. And then again, it moves to the attachment. So it is constantly moving. That is what we say, the distractions of the mind. Even at now, while listening to me, you may have some distractions. One of you may be listening to me attentively, other may be paying attention to my beard, third may be attention, paying attention to the green background. So mind is already distracted. <laughs> no, no, I'm just looking at you. No, don't look at me, look at the knowledge. It takes time. Third is that we say ignorance. <clears throat> ignorance means misrepresentation, mistaken identity. Mistaken identity that I believe what is changing is permanent. I have already covered that before. See that? Electron. By an example of the electron and by the four factors. <clears throat> so instantly I recognize whatever is changing is not real. What happens? Self-inquiry starts. So the journey of discovery in science is different than the journey of self-discovery in Eastern West. 
So the way, if we want to do some research in physics, I have to follow the principles of physics, I have to follow the principles of biology. If I want to do some research in the biology, same thing, I want to discover myself. I have to follow the principles of Eastern West. I do not have a luxury that, no, no, I know what is contemplation and reflection, and I'm following it. So I create my own principle. It will not work. I think you're clear about it. So that is what the first verse we have taken. Then in the second principle, <coughs> Why we say that as long as these three factors are there, I cannot see the real self. I gave an example of a gift covered by the three layers. So it means I have to remove all the three layers to find out who am I. <clears throat> so even in the beginning, it becomes challenging to grasp these principles. But by constant listening and learning, <clears throat> and contemplation and reflection, the things become clear. Right. The ignorance obscures our real nature. So by cultivating knowledge and the wisdom, by constant and regular listening and learning, followed by reflection, followed by the practice, gradually minimizes, reduces the impurities of the mind, it reduces the distraction, and then we have a higher level of awareness that results into an understanding. So understanding, I have been saying you, understanding is very easy for the human race. Entire human race and understanding is very easy. Why it is easy? We have an free intellect. We can pick up any, you can study any book. You can listen to any teacher. But that understanding should enter into my life to change my behavior and attitude so the first step is the contemplation i have to repeat that understanding with reference to the four factors i just talked you don't know i'm so busy you are busy only in the chain in the world that is subjected by the change so you are always busy in the world of the change and that change is causing you the trouble, and that is why we are not able to manage and go beyond the stress. So in the third verse, third principle based on that third principle, as long as the impurities are not weakened. Now the master is saying, that it is not weakened. You, we cannot remove the impurities 100%. <clears throat> not possible in the big. But if we weaken or if we minimize it, means I recognize here is an attachment, here is a detachment. I recognize insecurity, dissatisfaction, unhappiness is caused not by my honey, but by mental attitude of the impurity. It has nothing to do with anything in the world, not even including my honey or near and dear ones. I should have a conviction by understanding, by reflection. I should have a clear understanding why the electron does not have a life based on the principles of physics and balance. If I don't have that conviction in my mind, I will say, okay, Honey, you insulted me, but now I'm learning Eastern wisdom, so I don't have complaint against you. But then I go and sit again, I start thinking. It will not work. I have to be clear about 
clear the why. One guy was uh, was a he's a disciple. He's sixty five years old. He's a disciple of Satguru. There's a lot of craze about him, and then uh, he contacted me day before he started. So he d he does not know what exactly is the discernment, and he says that I go into a deeper state of meditation. I instantly recognized by his talk. He doesn't he doesn't stand anywhere. Why he says that he goes into a deeper meditation because he has been practicing for the last ten years. I have a good incident. I was going to my master, learning all these Eastern wisdom. At the same time, I was also I got a job when I was twenty three in a federal health department. So my senior was uh, 12 years senior than me. What it means? He has 12 years of experience when I has none. I'm just giving a, an example. Pay attention to it. But you can ask again next week, what do you mean by this example? <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> so every time, you know, this she was a woman. So every time, every time I want to, I, I, I was doing something, and she used to say that I have twelve years of experience. I didn't say anything for a year. I started learning. So I told my master, and master says, apply this uh, this technique to your brain. So I learned every aspect of the organization where I was. After a year, I recognized what I said to the women when he told me that I have 12 years of experience. What I said, I told you before also. I said to her that you have only one year of experience repeated 11 times. And now I have one year of richer experience than you. Find out if we are living into that. You know, I've been experiencing the honey like this, like that. You are repeating the same experience. You are repeating the same attachment. You are repeating the same insight. You are repeating the same hatred. You are not doing anything new. You have not changed your mind. <laughs> Don't you say to the mind, enough is enough. I have enough of differences. Don't start thinking, you know, just pay attention to it. <laughs> Our mind instantly goes to the other. It doesn't look inside. So that is why we say that the impurity needs to be minimized or weakened or reduced to live into higher awareness to continue the journey to find. But then again, the master last week, we picked up that the good karma alone is not efficient. Not in, they are insufficient. What is the karma? The casual law of action and the reaction. Of a present situation. My present state is based on my past karma for the last 40 years. I have been teaching and I have been learning for myself. I've been evolving. So this karma alone is not sufficient to help me reach to the highest state of meditation. Why? There is a good karma, there is a bad karma.
this body is the result of the karma. This body and the mind is the result of the karma. No, no, this is the result of my parents. That is physical level. <laughs> but at the mental level, they did not pass you the same karma. They did not pass you the same intellect. They did not pass you the same attitude. So this is the principle. I have to follow the principles of Eastern wisdom. We say <clears throat> we have an accumulated karma from the past life. Karma also means the past impression. So just whether you say karma or the past impressions. So the first layer of the karma is accumulated past impressions from the past life. Also, then the second, that whatever the karma, the way I behaved and reacted and acted in my life since my birth is also accumulated. There is a reservoir of karma inside us. And they, that reservoir contains both good and the bad karma. It is because of the good karma you are attending the lesson, not because you like me. Forget about it. I never care that. It is not because you like me. How many people you like and still you forget? No, I like your talk. No, you don't like my talk. Fact is that it is because of your good karma, you want to know about yourself, you have that flair, you have that urge. That is why you come and attend the session. But at the same time, it is, it is suppressed by the bad karma, which contains the impurities and the projection. That is why good karma alone is not sufficient. Did you understand that? We need a detachment. We need a purification. You know what happens? Session. So this is a good karma that is prompting you to attend a session, go into a deeper meditation. So during the session, you know, balance is this. And this is a bad karma. Right? Now you have attended the session. So it goes up a little higher. Now, after the session, it is going down, going down, going down, going down. Throughout the week, this is the state. <laughs> oh, let me attend again. <laughs> At least for 15, 20 minutes, I'm enjoying relaxation. So again, you go up and go down. It has to minimize these impurities. And I've already told you how to verify those impurities. Be very clear about it. We'll talk about it later, why, those in, why the mind prompted again to those impurities and I forget, I forget the contemplation and reflection. There is a cause again. And that is where we are heading to. Pure mind perceives the underlying unity in all beings. Let us start. Close your eyes. Eyes are closed. Make your body comfortable. Making your body comfortable. And then we did the first uh, way of being comfortable. You look at the neck joint being there, feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. Look at the entire body, be there, feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. That is the first approach. I'm explaining briefly. The second approach we said after experiencing the sensation, comfort, and steadiness, you look inside the body, become aware of the space, darkness, or emptiness. 
it is a projected emptiness by the impure mind, but it is a better state than the mind is constantly distracted. It is not aware of the world. So in the state of, in the state of space, looking inside space, inside mind, body is changing. And what is changing is not me. Simple, what is changing is not me. So that is a point of reflection, my friends. Now being carefree, we picked up being carefree, I told you, Example of the thought, like the traffic, and you're standing across, standing still, and the traffic is moving, so you see the what is changing, and you see what is not changing. So they both are separate. You cannot have one thing changing and unchanging, because you are watching the thoughts, they are coming and going. Thought coming and going means a change. So when you are watching and become aware, the thoughts are changing. You just, you have a cognition inside. What is changing? I explained you the four aspects of that principle. The world is constantly changing. So the body, mind, and the intellect. So we develop a cognitive ability. What is changing is not me. Because there is someone who is looking at the change. But still the mind does not listen to it clearly. So we replace. So I'm using the mantra to replace those unwanted thoughts. Asatoma satagamaya. Asato. So first we say in your mind. You, you sing in your mind. Asatoma Satagamaya Asatoma Satagamaya First is the chanting. Second is the meaning. Lead me from Lead me from the false to the real. And then we hear, we simply become aware. What is false? That is keeps on changing. So what is changing? Is it false? And now you instantly become aware the body, mind, intellect, they all are changing. So what happens to your mind? Mind becomes calm. That is the key point. The same thing we will apply. Tamasoma Jyotirugamaya Tamasoma Jyotirugamaya Tamasoma Jyotirugamaya Tamaso ignorance. Ignorance has many thoughts. And the real and the truth has only one thought. Who has a many thought means the part. There are many parts of the false. Many parts of the ignorance. 
and oneness is there in the real. Look at it. Understand that. So, and the real does not need any thought. It just defined to the awareness. Mrityur ma mritangamaya. Mrityur ma mritangamaya. Mrityur ma mritangamaya. Lead me from the mortality to immortality. Let us take its literal meaning and go into the knowledge. What dies means it is a changing identity. <clears throat> but I am an unchanging identity. I am of the nature of pure consciousness. Hence, I don't die. So that is what the Master says, immortality, that consciousness is immortal. It was present before the birth of the body. It will continue to be present after the defragment or fragmentation of the body. I don't want to say that. So this conviction should be there, then only it works. But still the mind continues to wander. So you look inside, my friend, you look inside. Where you look, you look inside the uh, forehead in the space. Very good. And then start breathing quick short in the gentle breathing through both the nostrils into the rib case we are again using the breathing to purify the mind Continue breathing, quick, short, and gentle. What you need to understand, you recognize the changes and the experiences and the sensation on one hand. You also recognize the resistance posed by the mind. It is a resistance posed by the mind, not by the intellect. So what should I do when there is a resistance? Endure the resistance. Where is the meaning of enduring the resistance? You keep on doing it. You don't get carried away by the changes and the experiences that you feel. It may be tingling, it may be some kind of sensation inside, maybe a vision and color, and you continue doing it. That is going to help change the mind. No pain, no gain. But here the pain, we endure it with awareness, so the pain does not remain, resistance does not remain. Continue. Continue, continue, And stop it. Just become aware of the changes. That is the meaning of experiences. Sensation, 
and also register in your mind the memory of the resistance and the experiences. If there was a resistance, your mind said, I have done for a longer period. Tell the mind that I have to do a little longer period again in order to minimize the impurities, reduce the impurities of the mind. So when you don't do it consciously, the next time when you do it, that resistance BM becomes a great reaction. It's a very subtle process. And now look into the breath. Start breathing deep, silent and slow. What is that deep, silent and slow breath? I follow a particular pattern and we will continue this pattern so that you progress. We have been so first you inhale deep silent and slow into your belly continue inhaling it is only one breath your rib also expands and while breathing out you first squeeze your belly air comes out from the belly follows the rib case also falls down Find out a sink. There is a sink between the inhalation and exhalation. I'm not saying that you have to do very deep, silent breath. You little deeper is enough where there is a movement of the belly and the rib case. That too is enough. Gradually, it will become deeper by, by on its own. Why? Because the mind will be absorbed deeper with it. But if you can do deep, silent, and slow breath, without any disturbances or resistance that is really wonderful so you are checking you are doing a conscious journey in meditation you know what you are doing how you are doing and where it is leading you to so i'm just a catalyst an instrument nothing more than that So now is so inhalation, deep, silent, slow. That is a track. During that track, on the track of the inhalation, you drop three Om Shanti. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Again, you exhale on the track of the exhalation, you drop three Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. I change the mantra. It doesn't make a difference. Om, Om is the real self. We are pointing the infinite consciousness and Shanti means the peace. So you are aware. Cognition is there. What is the cognition? The body remains in the state of stillness. Breath is deep, silent and slow. And the mind is engaged in dropping three Om Shanti in each inhalation and in each exhalation. And now, two times, but the breath is deep, silent, and slow. You do not change. It is still the deep, silent, and slow. So you have more space to drop Om Shanti twice during each inhalation and during each exhalation. So almost it is a kind of singing. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, inhalation is complete. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, exhalation is complete. 
So what happens, you know, the mind discovers a more freedom in that deep, silent, and slow breath. That is what we want to achieve. At least mind should experience a sense of the freedom, so it will be absorbed deeper into the meditation. So we are applying the tool and the tips to go deeper. Two Shantoham Now only one breath is just still the same. Starts at the point of inhalation ends when the inhalation is complete. Shanti again. Shanti mind gets more freedom here. You're just recognizing how the mind behaves, how the mind is working. So the knowledge and the way the mind is working helps you to deepen the practice. The knowledge is not there. You are unconscious, doing habitual stuff. It will not work. <clears throat> And now we allow the breath to be normal. Just leave the deep, silent, slow breath. Keep watching how the breath returns to its normal pattern. And every time the breath goes in, Om Shanti. Every time the breath comes out, Om Shanti. <clears throat>
Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand, lift your Buddha palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside the palms, know your experiences, we'll share your experiences. If you have any question, please, you can ask those questions. So how are you, Sophie? I'm good, Girish, thank you, but my mind drifted. So I stopped Drift. reading. There's images that come and I get my mind gets glued to them and then I go. <laughs> then I have to bring it back. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So what it means, it means we have to regularly do the practice and yes. see every time the mind is not distracted. That's a good observation. Even every failure helps us to understand. How are you, Mead? Thank you. Gone. No, she will return. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I, my, you can't see me. <laughs> I can't see you. Yes, this was a, a very fine meditation for me as I just had some some dental work and I was kind of, Ooh, but I feel so calm and clear right now and rest. Very good. Thank you. Continue the practice. Remain clear. Yeah. How mm -hmm. are you, Charlie? There we go. Um, I would say similar to Sophie, uh, the more I do this, the more I am aware of how busy my mind is. And in fact, what I have been observing is the more present my intention is, the busier my mind gets to try and distract me. It's it's, I, I'm sure part of it's habit, but I, part of it is my mind does not want to change and is really not happy about me wanting to be still and be quiet and be peaceful. So it's, yes. it's yes. the awareness is almost in a way making it worse. <laughs> yes, yes. No, awareness doesn't make it worse. Awareness makes me aware of the subtler layers of the mind that how the subtler layers of the mind is so busy. So, and then it manifests into millions of the thoughts outside. Correct. Normally outside, uh, we look at a person and the person is smiling. We say, oh, that guy seems to be good and calm, but no way. The mind maybe inside is so busy. So that recognition itself is a good thing. And then you do the practice and check. Every time you label, every thought comes to the mind, it is a change. It is changing. It was not there before. It will not be there after. So why to worry about it? So when I contemplate and reflect in that way, sooner the mind calms down, then it has few number of the thoughts. Interesting. So because knowledge has to be applied to the mind to realize that that is what the cognitive ability is. Right. Making the things clear. How are you, John? Hey, Girish, I'm fine. I think my mind was too focused on what you called habitual stuff. Very good. So it was focused on the habitual stuff. That's right. And so I become the habitual stuff. <laughs> right. So my mind is constant. It means when the mind is wandering, I'm wandering. 
So we covered that in the second step of the practice, being carefree. So again, go back to the four steps of contemplation and reflection. What is constantly changing is not real. And every thought is made up of the parts. Every thought is made up of the parts. And uh, we covered what we covered, the third aspect. Did you? Third aspect we covered in the process is that it is made of parts and whatever is perceived by the mind in the sense organ is not me. So thought is perceived by me. As you said, I have too much of focused on the habitual thinking. It is not me. First, the intellect should pour the knowledge into the mind. It is not me. Oh, it is not focused, but it is not me. So that loosens the identity with the thinking and habitual mind. And we all know thought has a life. It comes, it goes. We don't want to bring to an end. Why? That is what the impulsive and instinctive nature is. And that causes a lot of troubles. So, my friends, that is all for today. Those who ask the question is not there, so maybe oh, busy. That is all for today. Thank you.